Hi, uh, today we are going to talk about machines. So, what are machines? Here are some definitions of machines. First one says, a simple machine is a physical system using power to apply forces and control movement to perform an action. The term is commonly applied to artificial devices such as engines or motors. Machine can be driven by animals and people by natural forces such as wind and water, and by chemical, thermal, or electrical power, and include a system of mechanisms that shape the input to achieve a specific application of output forces and movement. Second one says, a machine is a device that helps us do work applying less effort, speed up motion, or apply forces at a convenient point. A simple machine has only a few parts, very few parts, the lever, pulley, wheel, and axle, inclined plane, wedge, and the screw. These are all simple machines. In the future slides, uh, I will show you some examples. The third one says, and it's really simple, and uh, I believe this is the most simplest definition there can be. So this one says, machine can be defined as a cluster of mechanical parts arranged in a manner each with a definite function to perform certain tasks together to reduce human efforts. And here is one more thing about machines, uh, which you normally don't get to know from people. And uh, I don't know how I come up with this definition, but uh, I think it's relevant. So um, here it goes. And machine can also be used to increase human efforts. Yes, that's true. Uh, I don't know if you have been to gym, like when you go to gym, you see the machines there. They increase your efforts to pull, to push, and uh, these efforts makes you build your muscles and uh, makes your muscles stronger. So I don't know if it's uh, relevant, but uh, it's true. And the fourth one is a machine can be operated by mechanically like petrol or diesel engine second electrically like electric cars fans speaker induction panels etc and the third electronically like fridge your air conditioner your laptops mobile phones or we can simply say that a machine is anything that makes human life easier okay so on to the next slide mechanical system a mechanical system manages power to accomplish a task that involves forces and movements. Force. What is force? A force can be defined as an influence on a body or an object, which can change its motion and physical structure. Like when you're sitting or you're playing in the ground, uh, you see, okay, let's suppose you are playing football. So you have a ball in the middle of the field you see the ball when you apply force you kick the ball with your feet you kick it and it changes its motion and uh, when you when you hammer the nail or when you hammer a wooden table it will destruct the wooden table which results in the change of physical structure Force can also be described intuitively as a push or a pull, like when you open the door. Either you push or you pull the door to open it. A force has both magnitude and direction. So let's see, what is magnitude? The magnitude of force refers to some of all the forces acting on an object. Forces acting in same direction have higher magnitude, and forces acting in opposite direction has lower magnitude. For example, uh, when you're playing tug of war, the game, you pull the rope and uh, you want to pull it as much as you can to win the other team. When you uh, apply force collectively, you have like four here, as you can see, like this is a rope. You're standing here, pulling the rope in this direction. And suppose you have another one, your friend, let's say, 
he is pulling the rope in this direction. So the magnitude, let's see, this is the center. So the magnitude is almost zero if it doesn't move the, um, the partition line. But one of your another friend, he came to help you with this game. So the force here is twice. But here is just one. So mag force here is higher than this side. So rope will tend to move on this side. So it moves towards the higher mag towards the direction of higher magnitude. I hope this helps. Second, what is direction? The direction of force is in the same direction in which object moves. If uh, let's take same example, the rope in is moving in this direction. I told you why. So the direction of force is this. Sir Isaac Newton described the motion of all objects using the concepts of inertia and force and found that they obey certain consideration laws. What is inertia? Inertia is the ability of an object or body to resist the change in motion. Okay, you're uh, playing the game, same game, I told you, tug of war. This is rope, one of your friend is pulling, and you are also pulling in your direction, he's pulling in his direction. So, he is resisting your force, so the center stays in the same point. So this force applied by your friend is inertia because he's resisting your force to move the rope in your direction. Or uh, we can say there is this uh, big boulder sitting on the land, let's say. Okay, I draw it, uh, there is a gap. Okay, no, it's okay. So here uh, you're coming, you try to push it as hard as you can, but it's sitting in the same spot. Let's say it's uh, 50 kgs and you are of uh, 40 kgs. Let's take this as an example. So you want to push this boulder in this direction, but this boulder is sitting in the same position because you are not applying enough force to overcome the inertia of this subject. This subject is applying inertia, so it's resisting the force applied by you. That's why it's not moving. This is called inertia. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. What are the laws of motion? Motion can be defined as the phenomenon in which an object changes its position with respect to space and time, or simply with respect to a reference point. For example, you're like uh, you're waiting on a zebra. Oh, sorry, you're waiting on a zebra crossing to cross the road, but it's red here and the car is moving in both directions so from your point of view let's take you as a reference point because you are standing in the same position you're not changing your position with respect to anything but with respect to you this car is moving in this direction and this car is moving in this direction so so let's take three basic laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion. I'm sorry, Isaac Newton gave the three basic laws of motion to explain how an object moves in a space or how it reacts to the forces. So Newton's first law of motion, it states that a body at rest or uniform motion will continue to be at rest or uniform motion until and unless a net external force acts on it. Same, and there is a ball in a football ground. It stays there until you come and 
kick it. Or let's say there's an there's a plane, there's a cylinder, it's rolling down, rolling down, rolling down. It will not stop until and unless there is a wall or suppose you are standing to stop this boulder to come down. So until and unless an external force. Here your force is your feet. Here you are trying to stop the motion. So you are applying your force. You are staying on your ground. So this is Newton's first law. Newton's second law of motion. It states that the acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the object's mass. Or simply, less force, less acceleration, more force, more acceleration. So you kick with less force, it will go, suppose, one meter. But if you hit it with all the force you have got, it may move to 50 meter, 100 meter, whatever, depending on the force you apply. Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law states that there is an equal and opposite reaction for every action. Okay. Don't do this, but uh, let's suppose your friends and you have a little fight. He pushed you. You also push them. So this is opposite and equal. If he pushes you with more power, you will push him with equal power. Or if you push even more, he will push you back. So there is always opposite reaction. Okay, this is, uh, don't do this please. So let's suppose there is a wall. You are trying to push the wall, but the wall is also pushing you because of the inertia it's applying the force on you that's why it's not moving so there is equal force to move the stuff either you have to be more powerful to push the wall or maybe break it down i think you get it okay let's see what are the types of motion linear motion what is linear motion? In linear motion, the particles move from one point to another in either a straight line or a curved path. When it's straight line, it's called rectilinear motion. And when it's going to the curved path, it's called curvy linear motion here you can see bird is moving straight but sometimes when ronaldo hit the ball it goes like this so it's still linear because it's changing the distance between the starting point and finish point so but it's curvy linear rectilinear is straight like uh, this car okay second rotary motion rotary motion is the motion that occurs when a body rotates on 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 its own axis for example electrons the axis is in middle and they're rotating on the same axis over and over again like uh, your earth i don't know if you have seen a globe there's this axis of i'm sorry my hands are a little shaky today. Okay, so here it's a globe, it's rotating on the same axis. The axis is always the same, it's rotating. So this is called uh, rotary motion. Also, the axis is here, it's rotating. S okay, it's, uh, I think it's called. I downloaded the wrong picture. It's called revolution. 
revolution. Okay, let's move on. The third one is oscillatory motion. Oscillatory motion is the motion of a body about its mean position. That is motion repeating itself over and over again. Like you are sitting on a swing, you cross same path for a lot of times. The strings of uh, violin or say guitar, uh, let's say this is a string. You pluck it, it vibrates, vibrates, and comes to the same position. Then you string, uh, then you pluck it again. Then it rings and comes to the same position. So this is called oscillatory oscillatory motion, a motion repeating itself over and over again. I'm sorry for the cut. Okay, simple machines. A simple machine is a mechanical device that changes the direction or magnitude of a force. Changes the direction or magnitude. Magnitude is, uh, I told you already, okay. Uh, some, some simple machines. There are six simple machines. The first one is wedge or a hand axe. This is a wedge. Hmm. A wedge is a triangular metal piece. You put a wedge when you, uh, if you go to a carpenter, you will see uh, when he builds uh, tables and chairs to lock the wood in its place, place, he hammers the wedge onto the edge like this. So if there is this, wood wall and this is the piece it will keep the place uh, keep the piece in the place and he cuts over it so it seems symmetrical lever a lever is a simple machine consisting of a beam or rigid body rigid rod pivoted at a fixed hinge or fulcrum let's see hinge uh, you see when you open the door like this is a door you open it it moves in the same point this is the same axis it's called hinge or fulcrum as here in this picture these all machines are there to reduce the load or reduce the effort applied by human so when you Put the load on the beam and you push it downwards it will get up easier than you picking up by your hands third one wheel and axle the wheel and axle is a simple machine consisting of a wheel here you can see the wheel attached to a smaller axle here you can see the axle, wheel, axle, smaller axle so that there these two parts rotate together in which a force is transformed from one to another. I told you the motion on its own axis is called rotary motion and in the straight line is called linear motion. So you are rotating the wheel, you are applying the rotary force but this rope is coming in linear direction so the rope is uh, winding around the axle and it's picking the load and it uh, reduces effort how if you pick up a bucket full of water by your hands you will feel it hard to pick it up but if you apply it by this mechanism it will be a lot easier because you are applying the force on the wheel and wheel is applying the force on the uh, axle and it's applying, it's taking the load on itself. A pulley. Pulley is a wheel on an axle or a shaft that is designed to support movement or an, and change of direction. How this is pulley? It's almost the same, but here you have to apply force on the wheel. Here, you apply force on the rope. It just helps you to reduce the effort. An inclined plane. An inclined plane, also known as a ramp, 
is a flat supporting surface tilted at an angle with one end higher than the other, used as an aid for raising or lowering our load. Here, you can see the point, this point is higher than this point. It's almost distance zero. Let's say this is 100 centimeters or 0.1 meters. So, mm. how? Okay, if you uh, see this guy, he's taking a card up on the up on an inclined plane, which helps him with the load because he's applying the linear motion. The card is applying the rotary motion, and he's climbing on an in inclined plane. I'm sorry, he's climbing on an inclined plane. Give me a moment, please. Okay. Where was I? Inclined plane. And the one is screw. A screw is a mechanism that converts rotational motion to linear motion. Here, as you can see in this GIF, GIF for GIF, whatever suits you. Okay, so you can see it's rotating on its own axis and this part on top of the screw. We can call it a nut, nut as in nut and screw, and uh, or you can say nut and bolt, of course, is the same. So this nut or whatever this mechanical piece is going in a linear direction, a straight motion, but the screw is rotating on its own axis. Okay, uh, let's move on to another slide. Okay, let's talk about the power sources for the machines. In earlier times, people or also some animals were used to power the wheel, uh, power the machines like. Uh, um, horse cart there is a horse he pulls the cart and the load on the cart so it's still a machine because it's reducing efforts from both human and animal how from for an animal if you put the load directly on an animal it will be a lot harder for him or it to carry it around and um, with the cart it's a lot easier still it's not uh, permitted these days but in older times it was usually uh, the common things you see on the streets some of the power sources are water wheel or a water turbine how it works here you can see these fins these are hollow fins you can see this yellow part is hollow and these are metal thick metal fins the water from the top also called head race fills these buckets inside the wheel this this void is filled by water and when you fill anything with anything like if you're filling a bucket with water it makes the bucket heavier than the empty bucket so when these buckets are heavier and heavier things tend to go down to the earth because of gravity of course gravity so uh, from the head race it fills the bucket with water and due to the weight it comes down it rotates and when it comes down it releases the water to the tail race or the bottom ground this motion keeps happening over and over again this bucket comes then this then this then this and it keeps on happening it's it keeps on repeating and the motion is uh, uh, sorry the this motion generates electricity how when you uh, if you know there is a like when I was when I was a kid I had this remote control car and uh, when the battery was low and I play with the car 
and I push it with all my force with my hand, of course. In the, I push it, I push it, I push it, and the motor inside it generates electricity, and you can see the lights, the headlights or the tail lights turn on because of the motion. How it works? There's this coil in the middle and there are magnets outside here, you can see. So when you rotate, this part rotates the coil and the magnets, the magnetic field acts on coil or you can say coil acts on magnetic field and generates electricity in return. It's the same for everything. It generates something, mostly electricity and... Okay, the second one is windmill. How? What is windmill? A windmill is, or you can say wind turbine, is a mechanical device which generates electricity with the help of wind. Wind is a natural source, as is water. It generates electricity. How? It's the same principle, but instead of water, it's wind. It rotates, it generates electricity, supplies to the town. Let's go to the town. Okay. Fourth one is power plant. Oh, sorry. Third one is engine. I'm sorry. What is engine? Uh, the, in, uh, in your later classes, or if you are really interested, I will tell you it later. But basically, an engine is a mechanical device which generates mechanical motion by burning fuel inside. Or this is also called internal combustion engine because the combustion the burning is happening inside combustion chamber you feel okay uh, let's take an example there's this empty bottle don't experiment empty bottle filled with little petrol when you shake it or shake it the air inside this bottle will absorb some of the molecules from the fuel from the petrol or gas gasoline and when you burn it like when open the when you open the cap you light the match it will explode don't try this i am saying it again it will explode so it's making an explosion it's the same thing happening in your car in your motorbike every day when you ride it so these chambers the petrol it is spray uh, sorry inlet wall is sprays the petrol in the chamber the spark plug ignites it like the match and it explodes but instead of going in this direction there is a piston it's also a mechanical device you will study it in your later years piston Piston is connected to a connecting rod, which is connected to a crank, and this is called a crank, and this shaft is called a crank shaft. So it's uh, like uh, when you, what, let's uh, mm, take an example from a sewing machine. In older times, the sewing, sewing, sewing machine works on the same principle. You push it, it turns it comes to the original position then you push it again here is the same the chamber and the petrol explodes inside the chamber it pushes the piston down which in turn pushes the connecting rod or con rod which in turn rotates the crank crank uh, this part is counterweight for the crank so the motion is vibrationless or least vibration of course you feel the vibrations while you want to okay so and this crank in terms rotates the crankshaft crankshaft is connected to gears which i tell you later which turn the wheels of the car so this linear motion rotary motion then again rotary motion then rotary motion of your wheel which turns in the linear motion of your car 
Okay, I'm getting off the track. Let's talk about power plant. What is a power plant? A power plant works on the combustion, but not combustion engine, of course. When you combust the coal, here's like coal coming from the mines to the factory. It's uh, the basic principle of a power plant is to generate the motion the same motion but not with petrol with the steam as in older times the steam engine worked like uh, the steam lifts the um, whistle on the kettle your tea kettle normal tea kettle i don't know if you have it at your home but uh, yes okay so how can i zoom in okay so okay so this coal comes to the factory it is burned and uh, there is this pipe connection which contains water when uh, you heat it the steam goes to the direction of a turbine it pushes the turbine to rotate it forces the turbine to rotate which generates electricity goes to the power grid and the hot water comes back and this tower these towers they cools the water down to the normal temperature and this cycle continues over and over again the next one is electric motors how electric motor works there's this magnet magnet north pole south pole of a magnet okay so broad coil rotates anti-clockwise magnetic field commute commutator reverse current brushes carry current to commute commutator electric current okay the principle is when you apply the current current also has neutral and live sorry n and l neutral and live or plus or minus this side is plus I, with the bump and the flat side is minus okay so the current flows from always positive to negative positive to negative always in every case so you apply current to a motor this coil this brush here is brush so it don't end up wrinkling or sorry winding itself into the same and make a knot and burst that's why this uses brush it's connecting when you when the current flows through the coil it generates a magnetic field and as you know north repels north same poles repels itself opposite forces attract attraction repulsion okay i'm sorry for the heart okay so when when the current flows it generates the magnetic field and when the north comes on this side it forces this north forces this north to go down same thing happen on the south side this south forces this south to go away from it it happens over and over again here is a question what when this north comes to sorry this south comes to this north and this north comes to this south i told you opposite attracts but it doesn't happen because when the force when this force applies there is a momentum and uh, this current is in sine wave so uh, yes uh, it's uh, in deep okay so uh, let's just say this pushes this coil down and this coil up and the motion happens in this direction counterclockwise what is fluid power or you can say hydraulic power 
this is incompressible fluid. You cannot compress this fluid. If you put the compressive fluid, it will not work. So put the incompressible fluid. You put the load on this. Let's say you're standing here. Okay, so if I push this down by any means, any means for the force, and uh, this goes down, this goes up because water will stay the same volume because it's incompressible. So the fluid, the power is applied by through the fluid, not by, I'm sorry. It's applied through the fluid. That's why it's called fluid power. Let's come on to the next slide. Mechanisms. The mechanism of a mechanical system is assembled from components called machine elements. These elements provide structure for the system and control its movements. <coughs> Earlier I talked about gears. So here you can see some gears or gear train. A uh, gear is a rotating circular machine part having cut teeth. These are called teeth. In case of a cogwheel, these are cogwheels. Inserted teeth. The teeth is coming outside. You can see the bump. And these teeth are going inside. These are called cogwheels. These are called gears. Which mesh with another compatible toothed part to transmit convert torque and speed i will tell you in later lessons what is torque and speed but like i'm applying the force like this in this uh, gear and this teeth pushes this teeth in turn which rotates this in counter this clockwise counterclockwise let's say anti-clockwise so it's easier to read when this force pushes this, this again in turn gives this motion, which is clockwise. So these are compatible with each other because their teeth sizes match. As in this, I cannot see anything with the same size, but if you use these wheel twice with the same size, it will do the same thing. Okay. So uh, that's the machines from my side. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.